welcome to the Tech Talent Q&A session sponsored by Old Dominion University and the Southern Virginia Higher Education Center. I'm Betty Adams. I'm the executive director of the center, uh, where we are committed to providing access to education and training that will prepare you for jobs in the region. And some of the hottest and highest paid jobs in Southern Virginia are tech jobs, like computer science, computer engineering, and information technology. And this evening, we'll be talking about how you can tap into the tech talent opportunities right here in South Boston at the center. We'll focus on ODU's tech talent bachelor degrees, and you'll be hearing from, one, from, for some, from some of the top faculty in those departments. Uh, but, but first, I want to spend just a few minutes to make you aware of the various ways that you can get to those degrees here at the Higher Ed Center. Depending on what your specific circumstances are, th there is a pathway for you. And so I'm going to share my screen. And what, so what we're, what we're here tonight uh, to focus on are the four-year degrees from ODU. These are in the Tech Talent Program. Uh, and we're focusing on computer science and computer engineering. But I also want you to be aware that there are five different ways that you can get there. Um, uh, probably uh, the, the most direct way is that you can take all of your courses here uh, through ODU. These are online courses, but if we can get a cohort large enough, say between six and eight people, uh, we are going to uh, designate special space where you can come as a group and take your classes and work with your cohort peers. And we will also provide uh, some um, um, advising and other resources. Another popular route to getting to a four-year degree here is through the community colleges. And there are two options. You can get your... Um, associate in arts or science uh, through the community college and that's a general studies degree and that will allow you to knock out your general ed credits and that's a fraction of the cost uh, and those transfer right into the ODU program. You can also register uh, and enroll in the information systems technology program with our community college partners. And that's an AAS degree. And that also transfers. And then um, we also here at the center provide training in information technology. So if you're still in high school, you can take the IT track through the Career Tech Academy. And after a year, you can earn a career study certificate and industry credentials. And all of these transfer as college credit into the community college AAS degree program. We also um, provide adult uh, learner programs in, uh, in the IT Academy. And we are a CompTIA and Microsoft Data Center Academy. Uh, in four months, you can earn the core training uh, credentials. And again, all of these transfer into the Information Systems Technology Program, which will then transfer to the ODU programs. So you've got a lot of opportunities to get to these tech talent programs. And the last thing that I'll say is that um, folks, you know, I, I don't think everybody is aware of uh, the resources that we offer here. Um, and so we're really focused on helping you succeed regardless of what the pathway is that you choose. So um, now I'm going to turn the program over to Steve Barry. Steve is the Community Business Enrollment Manager in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions for Old Dominion University. So Steve, take it away. Thanks, Betty. I appreciate that. Um, so I'm gonna take you through uh, a little bit about Old Dominion, um, a little bit about our admissions process. That'll be a little bit later in the, in the uh, presentation. Um, and we're also gonna introduce you to um, a, a several um, faculty members here at ODU um, to help take you through what we do in terms of our computer engineering programs and our computer science programs. And then as Betty said, there are, there are multiple ways that you can uh, take your classes at ODU, and one of them, if you are not planning to come to campus uh, in Norfolk, Virginia, 
is to actually go online. And both of these degrees are fully available online. And so we have a representative from our online group. And I will, I will introduce all of those uh, people to you all in just a second. Um, so let me, if I can, share my screen with you. And I think I've got it up. I can't actually see it on my end. So Betty, if you can confirm that it's actually running up there, I'd appreciate that. Lee, is my screen showing? Oh, we, we see your screen. Looks good. Very good. Thank you. It, it just it doesn't show on the split screen for me. So anyway, just a little bit about Old Dominion. Um, uh, we were founded back in 1930 as a campus of William and Mary, and we became Old Dominion University or College in 1960 and Old Dominion University in 1969. We currently have about 24,000 students, and about 10,000 of those do work through our ODU online. Uh, program. So uh, we were very experienced. We've been doing online programs for over 30 years uh, at ODU. So we're very experienced in that area. Um, ODU has about 300 or plus service and social clubs and organizations. Many of those are directly in the computer science and computer engineering majors. So you've got a lot of, uh, you would have a lot of friends and, uh, and other students who have to share the same interests with you. Uh, that you can that you can partner with in various clubs and organizations. We're also a member of the Conference USA. We play Division I sports. We have 16 different sports teams. So you do get the full college experience and, and teams to, to cheer for. So we do have about 100 years of history. We're excited about all that. Um, and with all that, um, we do remain very youthful. We're very innovative. Um, extremely diverse, and we really represent um, what it's like to live here in Norfolk, Virginia. So um, I want to talk a little bit about the tech talent pipeline. If you're not familiar with that, it's, it's a Virginia state program initiated by the governor. It is designed to attract and fill high technology jobs throughout Virginia. Um, basically, what it is, is an investment that Virginia is making in you. Um, they're investing over $1 billion across 11 state universities over the next 20 years. And the idea is to provide opportunities for graduates in high tech computer fields. So why just that? Why is that important? Well, Virginia's economic long term growth plan is centered around becoming a national leader in high tech business. So the technology sector can only boom if we train and provide the workforce that the companies coming in and the companies that are currently here require. So we're working to educate a workforce that will fill hundreds of tech, hundreds of jobs at tech companies all over the Commonwealth. And that's good for the economy and the quality of life for everybody in the Commonwealth. So that's the main purpose behind it. And why ODU? Well, our location is very unique among universities in Virginia. Um, we have some very powerful partnerships with some of the world's biggest industries. Being in Southeast Virginia on the coastline, um, we work with partners like the Navy. So we have strong partnerships with Norfolk Naval Base, the ports, the Port of Virginia, NASA, Langley Research. We have all the major hospitals here, the Centera hospitals, et cetera. And we work with a lot of high-tech leading industries like Booz Allen Hamilton, Dominion Enterprises, and Amazon. So you can see we're kind of perfectly positioned to partner with our industry partners for collaboration, but we also work with them for internships. We have that they will assign projects to our teams and our, our undergraduates actually work on projects for many of these companies. So you actually get to deal in some real world situations and solve real world problems. And that's also pretty unique. As we move forward today, we're gonna to talk about basically two of our programs. Uh, the College of Sciences and the College of Engineering. And to join us today, we've got Professor Lee Belfour. He's in our Computer Engineering Undergraduate Program Director, and he's going to share that uh, major with us. And then Janet Brunel, who's Assistant Chair of our Computer Science Department, is going to share the Computer Science um, programs as well. And then finally, Virginia Hill, who is our Director of Community Outreach and Engagement, is going to talk to you all a little bit about how ODU, ODU Online works and what it takes to be involved and uh, participate uh, with ODU through that. So I'm going to unshare my screen. And Lee, I'm going to turn it over to you. 
if you would like to start off and talk, tell us a little bit about computer engineering. Got to turn off my mute. Sure. Um, so I, I just want to thank you all for, for joining us here. Um, we just have a brief amount of time to talk about uh, uh, a lot of stuff. So um, uh, you're welcome to get in contact with us uh, later on. Uh, so as Stephen said, I'm, I'm Dr. Lee Belfour. I'm an associate professor of electrical and computer engineering, uh, uh, the department's uh, undergraduate program director for computer engineering. And I'm going to talk to you about the Bachelor of Science program in computer engineering. So um, our department has a computer engineering program. And underneath that, uh, we have two different majors. Uh, we have a computer engineering uh, uh, degree uh, major with a built-in computer science minor. And uh, the, the focus is on computer hardware engineering. So that, that's kind of a sub-discipline within computer engineering. And uh, the second major is in modeling and simulation engineering. So the um, uh, computer engineering major is a, a study of computer engineering. Uh, we talk about things related to com computational science. I don't know what he wants. Uh, uh, and we also um, uh, are linked with electrical engineering. So uh, we build computers that live in the world. Uh, they uh, have to have sensors and connectors uh, to that world. So uh, the electrical engineering education is uh, an important part of that. Uh, we design uh, computer hardware and uh, we need to know how to program it. So we have, uh, uh, knowledge of uh, computer science and the computer hardware is kind of the foundation for uh, how we build our systems. And as problem solvers, um, we try to balance all these out. Uh, we can do things like trade um, hardware solutions for software solutions and vice versa in a way that uh, best solves the problem. And with the electrical engineering component, we can uh, have it interact with the world. Um, I, I don't know if you realize, but uh, there are computers all over the place. Um, on my desk, I have dozens. I have my mouse here. There, there's a little computer in this mouse. And a computer engineer was involved with the team that designed this mouse. Um, uh, some of the things that, that were involved with uh, uh, digital computing devices and data processing. Uh, the computer engineers, we uh, work and design aspects of the computer networks, the back, backbone and underlying infrastructure of the internet. Uh, we, we design computer systems and, and we integrate them. Uh, cybersecurity, anything computer related is built on a computer and computer engineers were in, involved with the design of that. So um, we, we know the system from the ground up and we can collaborate and be involved with, with uh, cybersecurity. Uh, domain-specific architectures and custom data processing systems. Um, uh, Moore's law is dead and has been dead for a long time. So if you look up domain-specific architectures, we're designing data processing systems that um, actually don't have computers in them at all. Um, embedded systems are computers that, that are uh, around and pervasive and, and endemic, if you will, and you may not necessarily know that there's a computer in your device, for example, my mouse, and uh, software engineering as well. Um, our curriculum, and I know this is a, a tough diagram to, to follow, uh, all engineering curriculums are, are quite structured from uh, freshman year to senior year. And uh, that's, uh, we build in that structure uh, because many of the ideas, concepts, and design approaches require a, a solid foundation in various areas of, of science, mathematics, um, and uh, as well as electrical engineering and computer engineering. So uh, to give you some perspective, uh, the, the bubbles that are in blue are electrical and computer engineering uh, courses. Uh, my department is actually um, electrical and computer engineering. They're housed in the same department. Uh, the yellow bubbles are computer science. Uh, white is general education. And uh, we've got science and, and math as well in the program. Uh, here's a more stacked view of the program uh, showing uh, where 
you'll uh, take your credits. Um, in the computer uh, engineering program, uh, uh, there are several technical electives that allow you to specialize. And uh, you can kind of choose the ones you want, or you can have further specializations. We offer uh, concentrations in computer hardware engineering, computer networks, cybersecurity, and data analytics engineering, which uh, is kind of a combination of machine learning AI, as well as computer vision. So um, uh, the, there's a wide variety of, of things uh, that, that uh, are very interesting that, that we work with. Um, so that, that's our computer engineering major. Um, the jobs that you can apply for, um, anything that can have a computer in it. I don't know if you realize your, your car probably have, has many dozens of uh, uh, computers in both embedded and obvious. Um, uh, you can get jobs and internships uh, nationwide <clears throat> and internationally, uh, locally, um, as um, Stephen had, had said earlier, um, there's a, a great amount of industry uh, companies and, and governmental entities that are, are looking to hire and have hired many of our graduates. Uh, the modeling and simulation engineering major um, is, is also a study of computational science and electrical engineering. Uh, but the focus is on simulation, creating computer models for how things work so that you can understand their behavior and make decisions about them. So uh, we can, uh, it includes a study of in-depth analog and digital circuit simulation, the foundations of uh, computer engineering. Uh, but various areas of simulation are, are part of the program, discrete, continuous, and Monte Carlo simulation. A uh, Monte Carlo simulation isn't gambling per se, it's, it's more simulation with randomness injected and that, that improves the results of certain types of simulations so that you can make uh, better decisions. Some of the simulations are complex and, and take a lot of time. So uh, some of the work in modeling and simulation engineering is to figure out how to parallelize the algorithms and, and distribute them in a way so that you can get your answers faster. So using them on multi-core processors or uh, uh, NVIDIA's uh, multiple CUDA cores. Uh, and of course, we're, uh, modeling and simulation majors are involved in the design of, of software to do simulation. Uh, uh, in addition, virtual reality and augmented reality uh, as, as a part of making decisions, creating the simulations, uh, learning uh, uh, industry standard tools for uh, creating and, and working these app applications are a part of the program. Um, <clears throat> Unity, for example, if you've heard of that. <clears throat> um, in terms of career options, um, uh, many major areas, uh, uh, modeling and simulation major engineers can be involved in uh, developing and working with CAD software to build the next generation of integrated circuits. A defense modeling and simulation, Department of Defense uh, invest a huge amount in simulations uh, so that they can make good decisions about uh, uh, deploying resources, troops, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, autonomous vehicles and intelligent transportation. Uh, uh, you know, how do you do that and what, what are the best ways uh, of making that happen? Uh, software developers, of course, uh, game developers. Uh, you've got the AI, um, uh, computer vision, well, uh, 3D uh, software and all that's involved in, in building out games, as well as analytics and, and decision making. So analytics, uh, AI, uh, and machine learning types uh, of areas. Uh, the modeling and simulation major computer uh, program is also 128 credits. Uh, more of the courses are in the EC department, uh, uh, shown in blue, uh, uh, but they also have several important courses that are taking computer science uh, and, and the gen eds like in any other major, uh, math and sciences. Uh, uh, many employers uh, nationally, locally, and internationally hire modeling and simulation majors and uh, the, the different domains, automotive, medical, energy, autonomous systems, military, uh, gaming, aerospace, manufacturing are all um, domains that, that uh, our, our graduates uh, can uh, end up in. So, so why our department, electrical and computer engineering, computer engineering? Um, our department is, is one of the uh, 
uh, university leaders in uh, research. Now, you know, what does research have to do with your education? Um, if, if we're not in command of what, what we're doing and, and not um, approaching the state of the art, um, I, I think that it, it makes it tough for us to uh, teach you things that, that are at or approaching the state of the art. So in, in addition to being teachers, we're also practitioners of, uh, of uh, our discipline. And also um, we're, we're trying to uh, extend the state of the art. So um, there are a variety of areas that, that uh, we do our work in. Uh, one area uh, is imaging. So uh, we've got a couple of faculty members that, that do work in biomedical in imaging. Uh, some of the faculty are ECE faculty, others are, uh, uh, ha have backgrounds in the biomedical area. Um, uh, cybersecurity and smart speakers. So uh, the, these are built by different faculty uh, in our department and in collaboration with, with the cybersecurity uh, area. Um, big data. Um, uh, one of our faculty members monitoring seagrass uh, around the world. And, and by monitoring seagrass, um, you can get some more information about climate change. So uh, there's a lot of information uh, that, that has to be evaluated. So uh, neural networks and machine learning type applications are used to try and uh, make predictions, make decisions about how best to proceed. Uh, finally, our, our curriculum is hands-on, uh, both for distance learning students and on-campus students. So we very much believe that you have to get your hands on circuits, get your hands on things that, uh, uh, that you're building and working with. Um, uh, top right, uh, uh, students are working toward a competition. And uh, Dr. Oscar Gonzalez, our department head there, is uh, working with a student and mentoring him on uh, the work that he's doing. Um, and then finally, uh, entry-level salaries. Uh, do what you're interested in by all means. That's where you're gonna be the most successful. But uh, uh, the computer engineering uh, degree is rewarding intellectually, but also financially. Uh, while it varies from year to year, computer engineering was the highest uh, earning undergraduate major at, in 2019. And it's also among the top five uh, typically majors uh, nationally in, in engineering. So uh, our department, Innovating the Future, um, thank you for joining. Uh, and I, I think at the end, we've got time for questions. So I'm gonna uh, stop sharing my screen and pass uh, this along to uh, Ms. Janet Brunel. Steve, you're muted, Steve. Thank you. Um, I think we're going to take questions as we go. Um, oh, as okay. So if there are any questions for Dr. Belfour um, about computer engineering, uh, now would be the time. And you can unmute and ask, or if you want to put it in the chat uh, box, you can do that as well. I have a question. Okay. Uh, Do Dr. Belfour, how the hands-on, I mean, that's we really focus on that in our technical training programs. How do you do that with an online student? Okay, so uh, what we have are lab kits and equipment that, that we uh, ship to students. So uh, some show and tell here. Um, uh, because of my background, this is gonna be kind of tough. Uh, this is a uh, field programmable gate array board. Mm -hmm. So. Um, this is a computer engineer's equivalent of a 3D printer. So given the, the constraints of, of the device on here, we can create in principle um, any uh, uh, data processing system. We can create a, uh, what's called a soft core CPU. We can conceive of our own, or uh, there are actually open source CPU cores that we can put on this. Um, and uh, so a device like this, we would uh, ship to the student. And in some cases there would be parts kits, kits that would be uh, provided uh, as well. Um, so um, I, I, with, with the pandemic, I know that we've, we've had some changes in, in procedures. So I, I, I don't know exactly how it's uh, being handled this semester having come out of pandemic mode, but uh, that's what we've done in the past year. That's great, thank you. So does anybody have the question, what is computer engineering? 
I always have that question. So um, uh, I, I have a little bit of an identity crisis with this. So um, I, I, I just want to ask that question and try and answer it a little bit uh, because um, uh, students join our computer engineering program. They get jobs and internships and uh, uh, their boss will have them doing programming, information technology and all of that. Uh, we're, we're capable of doing that, but that's not really what we're, we're trained to do. Um, or what we're taught to do. Um, we're problem solvers. So as engineers, uh, you come with us with a problem to be solved. And the problem is a data processing problem that includes hardware and software. So in terms of information technology, um, you have a, a given foundation of technology that, that you can purchase or is, is part of uh, your, your company's intellectual property. Um, if there's something that's missing, uh, you would uh, uh, approach a team that includes a computer engineer who would um, help you design a new type of hardware system that, that you um, need. And uh, once we design it and it, it becomes part of the technology. Um, uh, computer science uh, focuses uh, on the art and science of programming. Um, our, our students learn how to program very, very well. Um, a, a third of our technical content uh, is computer science content, but we're, we're trying to balance that with, with the hardware part, the computer hardware, the, the ones and zeros, the actual circuits that you measure. So uh, we design those questions, we design those systems with, with all of these things in mind. And uh, so we'll, we'll build a foundation that we can pass along to uh, say Ms. Brunel and, and her students and they can they can program and code that. Um, uh, there, there was one thought that, oh, in, in terms of things like cybersecurity, these things are built on computer systems, computer hardware. And uh, there are certain aspects of that um, that a computer hardware engineer could help you understand. For example, uh, I don't know if you remember uh, Spectre and, and Meltdown. Uh, these are from several years ago. These were um, security uh, issues with um, all Intel CPUs and all AMD CPUs. And uh, it, it involves a timing information, uh, a timing issue, a race uh, that results in the leakage of information. So um, we understand uh, a lot of aspects about how that works and can understand the types of information that leaks and maybe help provide some hardware solutions for that. Dr. Uh, Belfour, we, we have a participant, um, uh, Shirley Clark, whose son wants to be a computer programmer or a software engineer. What is the difference between those two positions? Okay. Um, personally, um, I taught myself how to program. So I have a, a, a unique perspective on uh, what it takes. So um, uh, in terms of computer science, um, you're, you're, you're given a problem to solve and uh, th there, there is some structure to how you solve it, but there's not an engineering solution. You, you have the guru that goes into the back room, gives you a solution and, and may not be able to give you an answer about how it works, but that it works. Uh, th there's a story of uh, an old uh, uh, engineer, it, it was uh, uh, one of the designers, uh, was, I think it was Kernahan, uh, wrote a division program and wrote a comment, you're not expected to understand how this works. So uh, the, the, the science, the, uh, uh, there's a creative aspect that the computer science has that, that software engineering, while it has created the engineering aspect doesn't. Uh, in terms of software engineering, uh, there are processes in place to make sure that um, you build the right software uh, application. Uh, you've got a particular testing regimen uh, that you created for it so that you can verify that it works and, and uh, does what you, you expect it to do uh, when it's deployed. Um, so, so would your program prepare uh, someone for either of those areas? Um, I, I would say um, not directly. We don't have uh, 
at least in our department, we don't have a specialization in software engineering. Okay. Uh, a required course in our program is a, a software engineering course. And, and, and maybe uh, uh, Janet okay. can address that when, when she, uh, or, or, or now since the question is up. Okay. And um, can I just transition right into my part here, Steve? So one of the things that I like to tell my students, and I teach the senior projects classes for the computer science program, and we are problem solvers. As Lee said, um, that's part of what engineers and computer scientists are, computer software engineers. That's what we do. We take the world's big problems and we use our knowledge and our background to be able to understand, study, and then build a solution to that problem. With any kind of engineering program, in my opinion, it's something that's going to be tangible. Like, could I take this drink coaster and turn it into a computer system that I can touch, that I could hook a wire to, that I could hook circuit boards to, and then use to accomplish the tasks that I need? So there's always what I call a box, something that you can hook up to and give power to. Well, with software, it's more intangible. And I call what we do creating the magic black box. So think about it. If you had a program that were to tell you which students to admit into the computer science program at Old Dominion University amongst all of the applicants, a computer scientist would write that program. And all the people in the registrar's office would need to know is I can click my button that says execute that magic software black box and it's going to understand everything that it needs to know it's going to have been thoroughly tested and it's going to spit out that answer. That is as good as it can be based upon the intelligence, the knowledge and the understanding of those who were involved in building it. This is where Regina and I and others would get together and we would say, what does that box need to do? We would get into the mindset of the people and understand the process that's used. We would study that process and then we would engineer and build and maintain a software solution. So think of any time you click a button on your computer and it goes off and does something. Well, the buttons that you click on your keyboard or your mouse computer engineers were involved in that. But once it gets past that into those machines, that's computer science. And so we need to come equipped with what I call a big old toolbox. And here at ODU, we are a part of the College of Sciences. We are not a part of the College of Engineering. We partner with our colleagues in the areas of chemistry, math, ocean, earth, and atmospheric science, psychology, and physics. On all those bioengineers, we also work with them. And we get into looking at how to solve problems for the medical profession. We have a number of degree programs within our department that are um, important to share with you. There's an undergraduate program, but there's also an undergraduate program with teacher licensure. One of the things that is true about the Commonwealth of Virginia, they have redone what students and children and young adults need to know at about computer programming and computer science because it is our future. Dr. Belfort said it very well. Everywhere you look, there is a computer. There are computers where you wouldn't even imagine there could be computers. Without them, I feel that the world would be a terrible place to try to figure out how to live if we didn't have the magic of these machines. Now that they're networked, now that they are a part of our phones and everything that we do, Computer science is never going to go away. So we've got this teacher licensure program because the Commonwealth of Virginia is gonna require that students learn programming in the third grade coming up here soon. We need to train teachers to teach our children about computer science. 
we've got a number of linked programs that are online that you can, while you are an undergraduate, begin your master's program so that in a five-year program, traditional freshmen through master's earn a master's degree online in computer science from ODU. If you look at where all of the jobs are going to be through 2026, there's new data out there. I just haven't had time to go out and collect it, but I'm gonna get there. The, according to the um, Labor Bureau, 63% of all of the STEM jobs for the future are going to be for those of us who can build those magic black boxes. The print that is very small, but I have shared my slide deck with Steve and he can make that available to all of you, tells you the types of jobs that you can get through this program. There are many. We are not confined to a hardware implementation. We think through what the software enables us to do in support of our computer engineers and in partnership with our computer engineers. Our majors are working for companies such as Amazon, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google. They come to us looking for people to hire. They want the diverse population that ODU provides to the world through our top quality programs. One of the things that you also can experience is an honors program, undergraduate research, internships. I send out emails weekly to my student population on opportunities in the DC area in Washington state. I get requests from around the country on where you might be employed and now Post pandemic, the world has changed for computer scientists. We can live anywhere to work anywhere. And computer scientists can do that very easily. We actually build the tools that we ourselves use to be able to do our jobs by solving the world's big problems. There is a new student hub when you get, if you are to get a copy of these slides, you'll be able to go to that link and there is information for you about what is involved in the program. What I would like to share with you, just as Dr. Belfour had, we've got a prerequisite structure. It's very important to appreciate that the knowledge grows. It has to grow. It has to build from one course, one semester to the next. The gray courses are the math courses. I've listed these math courses that start you in algebra and take you through calculus one, calculus two, linear algebra and computational methodologies that help us assess the accuracy of the programs that we write. The, the greenish color there is the critical path. Those are the programming courses and the order in which they must be taken. Now, what's interesting about that is each one builds upon the other and the first three rungs of that green course structure are the same as what you would learn as a computer engineer. The blue courses to the right are those courses that as a computer engineer, you're learning in terms of what is working down at the bit level of a computer, down at the gate level. And so we use in our toolbox, math, science, programming, and theory. We don't do circuits. We don't own soldering irons. We don't have to strip wires. We use purely thinking through a problem and providing that solution. Though you can go and teach yourself any language, what we provide through the educational experience, especially at the 300 and 400 level, is how to think 
in a truly more abstract way in terms of how do I realize a unique problem and algorithmically using what is data science and math, how do I solve that problem for people without introducing more issues? And there's true talent in being able to do that well. Now, this chart has red numbers and course names. Those are all of the courses that you can earn through our Virginia Community College system that do feed into the computer science program here at Old Dominion University and for which you can transfer very easily, seamlessly, those credits once you've earned a grade of C or higher in those courses. What you'll see is you can come to ODU and finish that degree in two years with no problem. So if you wish to start in the community college system, that's a great way in which, as Dr. Adams was saying, to take those first and second year courses at a fraction of the cost. But our program is completely online. You may as well start from the very beginning and start here as an ODU monarch. The core is made up of programming courses and theory courses. It takes a lot of reasoning and thought to be able to program how to direct a helicopter via software to land on the deck of a Navy vessel in a blizzard in the fjords of Norway. Okay, my husband did that. He's a computer scientist. He, he went through multiple programs of computer science here at ODU. And he actually sat on the deck of a ship in the fjords and watched his software guide a helicopter in blind out conditions to the deck of a ship. If you didn't have computer engineers and computer scientists, I just don't know what the world would be like. And we work very well together to make sure that the things we can touch and hook wires to and the way in which that software analyzes and predicts and processes that information is the right way to solve the problem. So as I'm finishing here, the thing I'd like you to think about, regardless of the program that you choose, is that it's all about the math. When you come to see us at ODU, we wanna know that you are a mathematician. You will be taking calculus in our programs and preparing yourself to be ready to be math successful, to understand the theories and foundations and logical approaches that we need to use to engineer solutions is important. So come to us ready, as ready as you can be. In the associate degree programs, you'll take Calculus 1 and Calculus 2. And the last thing I'll say, I got a whole, you could see my little slide items here on the side. I got a lot of slides I could talk to you about, but I don't have all that time. But one of the things that I will tell you is that of our graduating student class, Usually, two thirds to three quarters of them are students who came to us as transfer students. We love our transfer students. We value the education that you bring with you when you come and join us at ODU. So please consider becoming one of the world's problem solvers. Think about ways in which you can associate your math with the programs that make things work. Computer scientists solve problems for people in every single domain that there is. Fashion merchandising. Have you ever sewn a dress? You put the pattern out, you cut it out, you sew it and you put it all together. Computers are used in making those patterns. Computer engineering students built the machines that also coordinate those that cutting, that drawing of those things. But, you know, think about it. I've bought patterns before to sew. I always had to alter them. 
because maybe my hips weren't the same as a perfect size eight back in the day. Well, what if a computer program could scan your body and build the perfect pattern for you every time as you sew your clothes? Fashion merchandising, fashion design, it's everywhere. So if there are any questions, I'd be happy to take them. And Lee's here as well. I'm hoping that we can make you feel good about our programs here at ODU. I'm looking to see what else I got in here that might be of interest. I think I'll just leave the research slide up there. Um, as Lee was saying, the reason four-year colleges with PhD granting programs are so amazing for students is that you get to work with our researchers. We have people who feel that a uh, cure for cancer is going to be out there. And through data science, collecting and amassing incredible amounts of data, we're going to be able to understand how unique each cancer cell is. And we are going to be able to solve that. And we have researchers in our department working on that. So it's a great place to be, and it's a great place to be in this field. You will get a job. There are two, there are twice as many jobs available than there are people earning degrees to acquire them. We're here for you. Okay. So are there any other questions for Janet? Again, uh, you can put them in the chat or unmute and shout them out. And while you're thinking, I, I earned all of my degrees at Old Dominion University. Go Monarchs! <laughs> My son did too. My husband did too. <laughs> oh, sure. We believe in ODU. Monarch family. <laughs> Monarch family. Well, we'll then I had one that went somewhere else, whatever. <laughs> we'll have some more time at the end if, we, if you do come think of some things you might want to ask as we go through this. Um, so I would like to introduce Virginia Hill, and she's going to talk about ODU online. As Betty said, there are a lot of different pathways to get to ODU. One, obviously, is, is uh, to come to campus and be an on-campus student. Uh, if that's not possible or, or you're working something along those lines, then online could be the solution for you. And both of these degrees are available 100% online. So I'm going to uh, turn this over to Virginia and let her tell you, let her tell you um, how all that works. Uh, good evening again. Um, my name is Regina Hill, Director of Community Outreach for ODU Online, and I'm trying to make sure I, I share my screen here with you all. Uh, can you see that? Yes, good. yes, looks good. Great, wonderful. Um, so first, I want to show you um, a little video uh, about ODU Online, the plus ODU. Students can complete their first two years at the community college, and then they can complete their junior and senior year courses with ODU. So the tagline plus ODU, you start at the Virginia Community College, and then a seamless transfer to Old Dominion University online. We literally can take a student here from the very first college course all the way to a PhD. The articulation agreements that we have with ODU make it really easy for students to transfer. And we have staff in place that will help our students make that transition. So I'll basically jump right in and then finish a year and a half later and receive my bachelor's degree. It lowers the risk, it lowers the barriers. Very important for us to understand the students and to make sure that ODU Online is a good fit for them because we want them to graduate. I did it, Mom! By taking your first two years at the community college, the tuition is at that community college rate. Not only does it save money, but I would say it does help guide students into what they want to do. Advising and mentoring and information for our students really from day one. I don't think I would have been able to finish school without ODU Online. 
And the reason why is it's convenient. You can go there and visit. They're welcome to participate in a variety of activities. A lot of the classes are asynchronous, and I can do them at my own time in a given period of time. So we're able to offer them an education right where they are. It's challenging, but it can be done, and I graduated. So if, <laughs> if I graduated, I think a lot of people can graduate. Okay, um, so to tell you a little bit about um, ODU Online, um, we started out in 1994 as Teletechnet, and that was our original satellite program in partnership with the Virginia Community College System. And the idea was to offer a quality education uh, that was affordable. In the fall of 2014, uh, we put all of our programs fully online. Uh, we currently have 50 partners in Virginia and across the country, including uh, Washington State and Arizona. And of course, we consider the military uh, our partners too. We've been known to broadcast courses out to ships at sea. Um, another part of our ODU online uh, program is that we have what we call the Center for Learning Technologies. And that center uh, assists faculty with course development and online delivery. So that is in-house within our distance learning program. Why ODU Online? Uh, we have 30 plus years of experience in offering courses at a distance. Voted number one top online college in Virginia 2019, 2021 by online colleges. And we have 25 years of partnership with the Virginia Community College System. And actually at most of the community colleges we have site uh, offices there. We have staff on site there at the community college. And we also have a site person at the Southern Virginia Higher Education Center who can help answer your questions. We offer uh, 130 programs online and I encourage you to go to our website online.odu.edu. You'll find our tuition to be very competitive and affordable. Virginia in-state tuition is 360 per credit hour and out of state is 407 per credit hour. We are a proud military friendly school and voted seven times best for vets. 98% of our online students reported that they were satisfied or very satisfied with their ODU online experience. Just to give you a little bit of information about our student profile, um, the majority of our students are female, 62%, 98% are male. Uh, the average age, 57% or less than 26 years of age, 16% between the age of 26 and 30, 10% between the ages of 31 and 35. 87% of our online students work at least 20 hours per week and 57% balance caregiving responsibilities. So if you decide to be an online student and we hope that you do, um, we have a team of individuals that can help you make the transition from the community college. First, we have um, enrollment coaches. Those individuals will talk with you about online learning. Um, they'll talk with you about your career choice uh, and your degree program of interest. The next person that you would talk with would be an enrollment coordinator. And that person will evaluate any college credit that you have obtained. And they will tell you exactly how those courses will transfer into Old Dominion. They will also help you with the application process. The student success directors are uh, advisors and they will be with you uh, the entire time through your career with ODU. They will help you uh, by semester, select your courses and make sure you stay on track for graduation. Our courses are offered mainly in two different formats, asynchronous, which is Blackboard, and synchronous, uh, you complete by using live conferencing such as Zoom. And some of your courses actually might use a combination of asynchronous and synchronous. Student support services. Our online students have access to many of the services that are offered on the main campus. Um, academic support, of course, 24 seven tech support, the writing center. We have a great career development center. They'll help you with your resume, uh, interview skills, 
We have a great online library. If you need any items from our library, they can be sent directly to your home. Uh, we have a great uh, Veterans Connection Center to help our veterans in active duty, a military, Student Success Center, and of course, free software. So in general, uh, to be an online uh, student, to be a successful online student, you must be able to learn independently, be organized, and of course, be disciplined. Um, you have to be comfortable with technology, proficient reader and good comprehension, and able and comfortable communicating with uh, your peers and professors online. And I suspect that many of you all now have that because you, in this pandemic, you've been uh, taking courses online. Some of the uh, frequently asked uh, questions that we receive will online appear on my diploma or transcript. No, your, your diploma will say that you completed your coursework from Old Dominion University. Is there a difference between online courses and courses at the main campus? Uh, no, the courses are taught by the same professors that teach on the main campus with the same rigor. Will you ever need to go to the Norfolk campus for your courses? All of your courses will be online. Uh, again, asynchronous or synchronous. How will you take exams? Uh, we use multiple platforms to administer exams. Uh, Blackboard, Smarter Proctoring, ProctorU. And some of our students actually do go to the community college to take some of their exams. Can I participate in commencement ceremonies? You most certainly can, and we encourage you to do so. Uh, we have two commencement ceremonies, one in the fall and in the spring. To share with you some of the rankings, uh, number six, best online computer science degree programs, that was intelligent.com 2021, and number one, best online bachelor's in, in computer engineering at bestschools.org 2020. Again, I encourage you to go to our website, and I'm going to click here so I can show you um, our website. Does everybody see that? It's good. Um, so if you click on academics and we'll scroll down here and go to computer science. That's not sharing. Yeah, that's oh. not coming up, Virginia. Well, Dorn. Um, okay, let me try. Probably coming up on a different screen for you. Well, let me, that just might, let me see what I can do to share that with you all. Um, because I would really if you hit escape to get out of your PowerPoint and yeah and let me see let me stop sharing for a second and I'll go back here and see can you all see now yes yeah. okay wonderful so um we'll click on academics and we'll uh, go down to computer science Again, there's a lot of information that we have on our online website. I encourage you to go and just take some time and look through. But what I want to really show you that I think is very impressive is that um, you can, let me see here. Do, 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 do. Um, let's click on computer science. How about that? Okay. Great information here. Um, top employers, careers in computer science. If we select, let's select Danville, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And um, it will show you actually job titles and the average um, annual salary and the number of openings. That's great. Uh, that's pretty good, I thought, would be of interest to you all as you decide your next steps. So um, again, we are excited and we hope that you um, ask questions and um, we have a great program. It's tried and true and um, we're here to help. Thank you. That's awesome, Virginia, thank you so much. Um, so I'm gonna just kind of finish up just a little bit with, um, if you all can see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just with admission. So, uh, you know, as, as um, Betty said, and Regina said, there are multiple pathways uh, that you can get get to ODU and, uh, and 
you know, major in either computer science or computer engineering. The, uh, I'm going to just share the traditional way, but it does sound like a lot of folks are going to be interested from, from the South Boston area, Danville area, that you all might be interested in the online um, adults working, it's a great option. Caregivers, uh, student workers, if you're, if you're a student, but you're having to work as well. These are, it's such a great option uh, to be able to get your complete degree online um, and be right, you know, be in a class, having cohorts that you can talk to, having professors you can reach out to. Um, and it's almost very seamless without even having to step on campus. However, if you would like to step on campus, we still can talk a little bit about that. Um, right now, Old Dominion is still the most affordable doctoral granting institution in Virginia. Um, so um, these are a couple of costs that are on here. Um, our on-campus, if you're in-state, on-campus is about $24,228. Now, what <clears throat> that includes, of course, is that this is based on a 15-hour, 15-credit-hour uh, student on average. And this includes uh, the room and board on campus, food, food uh, plans, and all of the things that it would take to live on campus. Obviously, it's a little bit less if you're off campus um, because of the housing uh, would be on your own. Um, but also, uh, if you look at the online that Regina was talking about, um, at $360 a credit hour, which is the same credit hour price you're paying if you were an on-campus student, um, you're talking around $5,400, $5,500. So it is a very affordable option to go through online, but also pretty affordable if you want to come to campus. Um, so again, based on 15 hours. Um, and in terms of financial aid, I just want to share a couple of quick things with that. Um, we have a very strong uh, and robust financial aid department. So either way, you want to you want to go online and talk to and make a connection with our financial aid department. One of the things, if you're an on-campus student, uh, every on-campus student applicant uh, is eligible for what's called a merit scholarship. So we will look at your high school grades, your SATs, all your um, academics uh, prior to college, and we rank them. And we can provide uh, scholarship dollars, merit scholarship dollars, anywhere from $2,000 up to $6,000 for an in-state student. Uh, Out-of-state students, it can be, it's basically double that. It's $4,000 to $12,000. Um, so, and that happens whether you apply for uh, financial aid or not. But I would recommend that everyone consider financial aid. There are scholarships available. If you look at our financial aid page, you will see a scholarship button on there. Click on that. There are hundreds of scholarships available. It will give you basic information about each scholarship, how to go there, um, how to apply for it, what the qualifications were, and obviously how much that you could earn. So um, there are a lot of options to help us and, and assist you as you pay for uh, as you pay for college. In terms of freshman applications, now, if you want to start from the very beginning, all right, if you want to transfer in, if you do uh, junior college first, you do um, uh, one of the community colleges first, then it's a slightly different application process. Um, but if you are coming in as a freshman, you will you can apply online at odu.edu slash apply, or you can use the Common App, which is available to, to all students, commonapp.org. We do have early action beginning in December. And then in February, we begin our regular decision-making process. What I would recommend is, um, is get it in as early as possible. Get your application in as early as possible. Don't wait. We do have rolling admission, which means we will enroll students throughout the year, right up until the time that the semester starts classes. Um, but if you wait too long, then you may not get the classes or maybe the times that you would prefer. So the earlier, the better on that. Uh, required items, just so everybody's uh, clear on that, there is a $50 application fee. You do have to have your high school transcripts, and they have to be sent to us from the high school, from your high school counselor. Um, students cannot send those on their own. It does have to come from the high school itself, and they can be emailed to us or they can be mailed. Um, and we do, we are test optional on SATs. Um, so, or, and you can self-report your SAT if you have taken it and then turn the score in later, uh, or you can go test optional and not take it. We still recommend that you do take it, especially if you're looking for some additional financial aid, um, because the SAT does 
help bump you up in the merit scholarships that I talked about earlier. So if you have access to your SATs, I definitely would take them and, um, and submit them to us as well. And then finally, this is some, some basic information here. Um, if you want to reach out to me, if you're a computer science, computer engineering interest, you want to reach out to me and I can help, uh, help you with some additional questions or some additional information that you might have. Um, my email is there, srbarry at odu.edu. And the number that is there, 757-255-8618, is my cell number. So you can call me uh, or text me at that number as well. And if we just want some general information, you can always uh, reach out to us at admissions at odu.edu. Um, so are there any questions about the admissions process? No questions there. Right. Are there any other questions that you'd like to ask uh, Dr. Belfour um, or Dr. Brunel or Regina about the two majors or about the online program? Hey, this is Aaron uh, from the uh, Southern Virginia Higher Education Center. I actually have a question for you. Okay. I've heard some colleges are now accepting <clears throat> um, related work experience for credit hours. Uh, does ODU participate in that? We do. What we do is we will do an evaluation of your work experience um, and, and, and take a look at that and determine where, through that evaluation process, where you might fit in and what type of credit hours we could apply to that work experience. So the short answer is yes, we do, but there is a process um, that you, would have to go through, be evaluated. Um, there's some testing that goes through that just to make sure that you're positioned properly for success. Um, the last thing that, that we would want to do is, is, is put you in over your head or, or too far behind what you're capable of doing. So there is a process, there is a testing process for that uh, to make sure that you're well positioned for success. And we do have an office of prior learning and what they'll do is allow you to challenge a course. So if you find a course at ODU, you know, for accreditation reasons, we have to go with our course structure um, in terms of meeting the all the requirements for earning one of our degrees. But you are able to look at the syllabi of any of all of our courses. If you find one that you feel your experience aligns with, then you can challenge that course. We will put you with a faculty member for a computer science course, for example. They'll do a little, have a conversation with you. If it looks like you would be successful in challenging that course at a 70% pass rate or higher, then we would um, match you with that faculty member. And you may have to do an exam. You may have to write code. You may have to do a lab. It, may, it just depends on the, the uh, content of the course. But if you are successful in passing the course, you do not earn a grade of A, B, C, or D. You earn a grade of just like transfer passing, but it's called experiential passing. So you will actually earn course credit for that challenge. Now, in some programs, you are able to submit certifications to earn course credit. But in both the computer science and computer engineering programs, there are no certifications that apply to our degree requirements. That's perfect. Thank you, Janet. And Regina just put a link into the uh, chat box if you want to get some more information on the prior learning department. Thank you. How that works. And I just want to make a comment about engineering. Um, a, a lot of our courses are, are very much math based. So it's um, sometimes tough to transition uh, what you've learned on the work to uh, something that's a suitable pre prerequisite for courses that follow. And our purpose here is to make sure you're successful. Sometimes it seems like when you transfer, you lose credits, you know, when people transfer from one four-year school to another four-year school. But it's because we don't all hand pick our courses to have identical content other than maybe math courses. 
Otherwise, it's a little bit trickier. And what we are intending to do is to make sure that we meet our accreditation standards for our students and the, the knowledge that we provide them. But also, when you take a course, you're ready for it. Thank you. We like A's. Those grades are good. <laughs> um, math, uh, Janet or Lee, maybe you guys can help help with this as well. There, to evaluate math and making sure that we see success in that as well. Um, if there's questions about you know where a student might be in terms of their level of math understanding, the Alex program. Can you elaborate on that just a little bit? Alex has um, been an interesting transition for us. So you're placed, if you come straight from high school, you're placed into math based upon your high school GPA or those all important SATs that we hope do not disappear from a high school experience. But what, um, if you come with transfer credits for algebra or pre-calculus, you'll start in the subsequent course. There won't be an issue if you come with dual enrollment credits. So credits, college credits or college credits. But coming from high school and or industry, we have some software that the university has invested a good bit of money in that will allow you to actually do some self-paced modules. And upon accessing and completing those modules, at a, when you're ready, you'll be able to sit for a proctored exam and it will place you in anywhere from pre-algebra all the way through calculus. And so a student is absolutely able to remediate on their own and come and begin that Alex, it's A-L-E-K-S, begin that process here at ODU and place anywhere within that range. Yeah, and then uh, those of you that are, uh, will be freshmen next year, uh, the summer beforehand, we, we do our freshman preview. Um, monitor your ODU emails. The, the minute you get information about uh, the ALEC tests, and there are also placement tests for, uh, for chemistry um, uh, and, and uh, writing, um, get on that. Uh, get those settled. Uh, in terms of the ALEC test, um, they've got uh, prepared modules that, that uh, uh, you sit through and you take a practice test, which will tell you where your weaknesses are, which will allow you another opportunity to review. So th there's a lot of things that you can, you can do to get in the right math, but also as Janet said, um, if you wanna study up even um, and, and do a learning on your own to, to get in the next math class, because um, both programs are, are based on math. The sooner you can get into calculus, the sooner you can get into the meat of the programs, and uh, you'll save money and you'll save time. And you, ODU is amazing in that we will take students at any level of preparation for math, being that we are math strong in our programs. Some schools in the Commonwealth of Virginia will only take you if you're ready for calculus two but we will take you at any level of preparation. If it's been 10 years since you went to school, you're ready to come to ODU. If you are coming straight from high school and maybe math wasn't your best subject, but your heart is set on being a computer engineer, you can come to ODU. We're here to help you get where you need to be. And we have a lot of programs in place. Regina was talking about We've got tutoring centers. We've got a lot of structure in place, resources in place, especially in light of our post-pandemic environment. You know, before, before the pandemic, there were programs in our college that weren't so uh, internet course happy. And it's amazing. We found out just how great the, the environment can be. And I think a lot has evolved and will continue to evolve at all schools in that regard. And it's a great, pro I've had students graduate and be the banner carrier 
for the College of Sciences who never stepped foot on campus. It's happened twice. And I'm, you know, I'm proud, just it's it's the same program. It's as rigorous, but as Lee and I will tell you, it's rigorous. <laughs> These programs are rigorous. That's why we make the big bucks. I also want to encourage you to, um, if you're thinking about computer science, computer engineering, work with um, your advisor at the community college because we work very closely with those folks. And if you tell them that you wanna to transfer to Old Dominion, we can start working with you immediately. So the earlier that you make that statement, the better we can serve you and help really save you time and money because we want you to take the right courses that will transfer and we can help you every step of the way. And our advising group here at ODU, because of our successful distance learning program and our two plus two programs, they actually have advisors who are in place to help students before they've even applied to ODU through our community college system. I've been paying attention at all of these meetings. I've learned a lot. <laughs> And Regina, you're the bomb at putting those links in there at the, on the fly. <laughs> she's, she's put so many links for you in the in the chat. Well, I don't know if I'm the bomb, but I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> on it tonight. So not as I'm impressed. Time, That's awesome. <laughs> she, she puts them in there before I can before you can even think about them. <laughs> That's strong. Um, well, uh, Betty, I think. Um, We've covered a lot of bases. If there are questions, we can we can wait for a little bit. But I, I do want to at least thank Lee and Janet and Regina and, and then you all and Hope for hosting us for uh, through all this. And um, if you've got some closing remarks, we'll go there. Well, I'm just, you know, um, really impressed with everything that I've heard tonight. And I've always felt good about having ODU as a partner, but I feel even better having heard from your folks this evening. So um, I wanna thank everybody, Steve, thank you, um, uh, Dr. Brunell and Dr. Belfour and Regenia Hill, thank you for, for giving us this time. Um, I hope that uh, we can attract more students to this, these programs. Um, uh, these are incredible opportunities right here uh, in our backyard. Um, and we've got a very strong partnership with our community colleges. Uh, so, uh, you know, I encourage anyone who is interested uh, to, to make an appointment to reach out to one of these people. Um, and um, let's talk about what your opportunities are uh, with ODU and here at the Southern Virginia Higher Education Center. So, Steve, again, thank you. And, um, and we look forward to continuing our partnership with ODU.